To start this guide off, I'm going to assume you guys know where to go to open your Collectopedia. It's just in your menu where your equipment and stuff is. But to start this guide off, first I'm just going to show you all a few things, a few areas where you can find some Collectopedia items. This is one of the major hotspots for Collectopedia items in Xenoblade 3 because if we zoom in right here, we can clearly see some Collectopedia orbs just frolicking about in the wilderness. And also, if we move the camera over a little bit to the left, we also see that there's some item orbs over there as well. Now that we're back to the Collectopedia, I want to tell you all some of the benefits for using this and just some minor improvements. So the first improvement, as you can see, is each page is now filled up. No more massive wastes of paper in Xenoblade, guys. I know, it's been long awaited for, and I think we all appreciate that they put that back in Xenoblade. Also, not a new feature, but I would love to point out the huge mural of the Orion Titan on the right. I think it's really cool that they just, you know, continue to put these amazing perspectives of the world in the Collectopedia. An, an actual new feature is, now if you see in the vegetables tab, I have two vegetables with green arrows over them. That actually signifies that it was automatically registered. Because you don't have to use the item every time you want to register it now, which I think is a really nice feature. You know, using the waste an item when you were going to use it for a quest anyway. And now what you all have been waiting for, the benefits from using the Collectopedia. Similar to Xenoblade 1, you get item rewards, right? The item rewards, instead of being armor and stuff now, they are pouch items. Which, if you need a tutorial on that, I just uploaded that like a day ago. And... Also, they give you buffs now. It's the pouch item, just, you know, because they're going to give you the buff anyway, so I give you, like, a good piece of equipment. So the buffs you'll be getting will fall under three categories. It'll either be movement-related, combat-related, or social-related. So, you know how in Xenoblade 2 we had field skills? So, the social area is probably your field skills. It'll probably be, like, you know how we had the girls' talk skill, and we had the, like, manly skill or something like that it was something like that in xenoblade 2 you have those back in the in the form of social skills so her movement skills also kind of part of the field skills part but you know they can increase your movement speed as well so movement speed like the water ability that Egeon had in torna things like that you know just general abilities will be in that section and for combat these are the ones you're going to want to look out for they're typically under the bugs or parts section though so if you complete those, you'll typically get the combat buffs. They can give you huge damage buffs up to like 4,000% extra damage. That was an exaggeration. Probably only goes to like 400%, but still a good margin. Yo, quick side note. Uh, these are all the categories. Y'all probably saw it in the compendium. No, Collectopedia. I'm stupid. But, you know, just make sure you look out for this. Make sure you know all of them. There might be a few new ones in there from Xenoblade 2 and Xenoblade 3, but typically this is all you'll see. And that's the end of another banger guide. I hope you all enjoyed it. If, if it was boring, tell me. If it was enjoyable, tell me. If you hated it, tell me. If you had any mixed emotions while watching this, tell me. If you enjoyed this video, tell me. Just, just tell me.